Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be discussing the first lesson in the Forex beginners trading series. But before we get into that, for those of you guys who are new here, this channel focuses on comprehensive financial education for traders and investors. And for those of you guys who are looking to get started trading, this is a great way to get educated on this market. Now, for those of you guys who want a little bit more, go ahead and browse the description below for various resources that we provide to you to assist you in the process of getting started. For example, our free Discord community that's growing quite rapidly, and we provide daily Forex trading signals for free for those of you guys who want to get started in this market so with that out of the way let's go ahead and get started with this first lesson here so in the first lesson we're going to be just be discussing the fundamentals of the market a big problem in getting started trading that I see a lot of traders make is they just go on YouTube and they type in the best strategy to get rich in the stock market or the Forex market that's not going to be a way to really uh, learn a skill and be able to hone in on that skill for the long term and turn this into sort of a business instead of just a short idea of trying to get rich quick because number one you're not going to get rich quick and number two you're not going to build any real skill so you have to understand the fundamentals of a market before you can actually dive in and get started trading so let's go ahead and discuss what exactly is forex so first off what is forex Forex is a global market that allows for the exchange of one currency for another. So if you guys have traveled before, you know that you have to exchange your money at a currency exchange, normally located inside an airport or at a various store, uh, normally a currency exchange store um, in a downtown area or something like that. So this is going to allow for the transfer of the funds from the country you came from into the funds of the country you have just arrived at. So a quick example of this would be visiting Japan from America. You sell your United States dollars and buy Japanese yen. When you leave, the exchange rate will have most likely changed, and it's these changes in exchange rates allow you to make money in the foreign exchange market. So those incremental changes or large changes in the price of different currencies is what's going to allow you to make money in the Forex market. So the foreign exchange market is commonly referred to as Forex or FX, and it's the largest financial market in the world. So a bit of confusion. A lot of people don't understand that the foreign exchange market is the same as Forex and also is the same as FX. They're just little acronyms and nicknames for the market. Uh, but overall, it is the foreign exchange market. Now, when compared to the largest markets in the world, the Forex market dwarfs all others in average daily trading volume. For example, the Forex market has $5 trillion per day. The New York Stock Exchange has $22.4 billion per day. The Tokyo Stock Exchange has $18.9 billion per day. And the London Stock Exchange has $7.2 billion per day. So you can see that the Forex market is actually around 200 times bigger than the largest stock exchange in the world, which is the New York Stock Exchange. Exchange. Now, guys, I just want to quickly mention for those of you guys who are maybe wondering where you guys can get more information and more training and education. This series is actually going to follow the curriculum of the Baby Pips trading course. So I'm going to leave links to the different pages that we use for each video. Uh, you guys can go over there and actually check and go through all of the information provided on their website. It's actually a great way for beginners to get started and act it's actually where I learned how to trade Forex when I was first starting off. So it's going to follow that curriculum and all of this information is going to be credited to Baby Pips, at least the, the way we follow the curriculum. And then we're going to jump in some of the more customized and advanced training uh, that will come from me specifically. So continuing on guys, we have uh, what is Forex? going on this means the currency market like I said is over 200 times bigger than the largest stock exchange in the world however daily volume from retail traders which would be you and me makes up between five to six percent of overall volume or between 300 to 400 billion dollars per day so in reality guys Forex is actually around a 400 billion dollars per day uh, which is still around 18 times bigger than the New York Stock Exchange so you can see it's still a massive market compared to even the largest stock exchange in the world so another unique aspect about the market is that it rarely ever closes the Forex market is open 24 hours a day and five days a week only closing on the weekends so unlike stock and bond markets the Forex market does not close at the end of each business day 
Instead, trading just shifts to different financial centers around the world. So uh, just a quick example of how the market actually works. The day will start with traders in Sydney, which is in Australia. It then moves to Tokyo. It then moves to London. It then moves to Frankfurt and follows up and ends the day in New York. So the simple answer about what is actually traded in Forex is going to be money. However, it can be quite confusing since you're not buying anything physical. When you go ahead and purchase a currency, if you buy or sell a specific currency, it's not like you get that currency in the mail and you have to hold on to it uh, or you have the actual stock in your portfolio. Uh, these are just more so positions. So it can get really confusing on how the market actually works. So basically think of it as buying a currency, as buying a share in a particular country, similar to buying stocks of a company. The price of the currency is usually a direct reflection of the market's opinion on the current and future health of its respective economy. So for an example, when you buy the Japanese yen, you are basically buying a share in the Japanese economy. You are betting that the Japanese economy is doing well and will even get better as time goes on. So once you sell those shares back to the market, hopefully you're going to end up with a profit instead of a loss, which we'll talk about more later on how to actually make money instead of lose money in the Forex market. So in general, the exchange rate of a currency versus other currencies is a reflection of the condition of that country's economy compared to the other country's economies. So there are many currencies available to trade. However, as a new trader, you will most likely probably start trading with the major currencies. So this is a list of the major currencies. And again, this photo is provided by babypips.com. I'm going to leave a link in the description in all of these videos uh, to the corresponding uh, pages that we use for the curriculum. So USD, that's the United States currency, which is the dollar, the euro, uh, the yen, the pound, the franc, the dollar uh, for Canada, the dollar for Australia, and the dollar for New Zealand. So these are all of the major currencies. However, it doesn't end there. So currency symbols always have three letters where the first two letters identify the name of the country and the third letter identifies the name of that country's currency. So we can see New Zealand dollar is NZD for New Zealand dollar. And if we come back here, you can also see, you know, Euro, JPY, GBP, CHF. It makes quite a lot of sense and it's very easy to understand once you understand that that's how they actually form the names of each of the pairs that you're going to be trading. So buying and selling currency pairs. So Forex trading is the simultaneous buying of one currency and selling of another. So even if you're just clicking the buy button, you're actually buying one currency and selling another at the same time. So currencies are traded in pairs to demonstrate this process. For example, the euro and the US dollar pair, which is euro USD. When you trade in the Forex market, you buy or sell in currency pairs. The currency pairs listed on the next page are the majors, which we just listed before this. And they all contain the US dollar on one side and are the most liquid pairs and uh, some of the most widely traded as well. So here are the pairs. These are again the majors. Uh, and these are the pairs that are traded most widely. We have the Euro USD, USD JPY, GBP USD, USD CHF, USD CAD, ODD USD, NZD USD. So you guys can go through those. Pause the screen if you need to just to review these. And again, I recommend guys as you go through this entire series, definitely take notes. Um, as I said, we follow the curriculum of the babypips.com website. And the reason I wanted to create this is because I know a lot of you guys don't want to read the entire uh, curriculum on baby pips. You would rather have a video format to be able to learn from. So that's what I wanted to provide it for you guys. Uh, so definitely take notes. I eliminate a lot of the, the stuff that they put in there that's just kind of fluff and really get down to the parts that you need to know uh, and eliminate, eliminate the parts that you don't need to know. So major cross currency pairs or minor cross currency pairs, uh, these are more pairs that aren't necessarily the most widely traded, but they're still some of the ones that you can take advantage of once you get a little bit more experienced. So currency pairs that don't contain the US dollar are known as cross currency pairs or simply as the crosses. Major crosses are also known as minors. 
The most actively traded crosses are derived from the three major non-USD currencies, which are the euro, the yen, and the pound. So you guys can see right here, here are some of the euro crosses, and you can pause the screen if you need to, uh, if you want to review some of these. And I wouldn't necessarily pay attention to that right column. Uh, I don't really use any of those words, nor do I really hear anyone saying that, but uh, it was included in the website. And then we can move on to some of the yen crosses. These are actually some of my favorite pairs to trade, and we'll discuss more so on this why, a little bit more as to why I like trading these later. And then some of the pound crosses. And finally, some of the other crosses. And again, guys, pause the screen if you need to, if you want to look at some of these. Uh, but this is just kind of some information on what crosses are out there. And then finally, we're going into some of the exotic currency pairs. So exotics are made up of one major currency paired with the currency of an emerging economy. So exotic pairs aren't as heavily traded as the majors or crosses. So the transaction costs associated with trading these pairs are usually bigger. So for example, Brazil, Mexico, and Hungary, those are some emerging economies that would be paired with a major. And here's a list of those exotic currency pairs. You guys can go ahead and pause the screen once again if you need to. Uh, but as you can see, a lot of these are, pa are paired with the USD. So uh, you can see Brazil, Saudi Arabia, we have Thailand, Mexico, Denmark. Uh, and again, pause the screen if you guys want to look through these. Um, but we're going to discuss which ones you want to pay attention to uh, a little bit later on throughout the series. And also we have G10 currencies. So these are 10 of the most heavily traded currencies in the world. The dollar, euro, pound, yen, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, Swiss franc, Norway krone, Sweden krona, Denmark krone. So you guys can, again, if you guys want to write these down or anything, not really necessary to write them down right now, uh, but if you needed to. And lastly, we have BRICS. So BRICS is an acronym coined for an association of five major emerging national economies, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Go ahead and look at those here. And that will be the last slide of this lesson. So the way I wanted to break these lessons up, guys, um, I didn't want to make them too long for you. They're going to be around 10 to 15 minutes long each. Uh, I could go through and make them you know, 20, 30 minutes long, but I know for me specifically, I would not want to be listening to a 30-minute lesson on you know, what is Forex and uh, just going over the foundation. So I wanted to make them a little bit shorter for you guys. Uh, so again, we're following the curriculum of babypips.com. So if you guys want to watch a video and then jump over to the link that I'll provide in the description to the website so you guys can go through and actually complete each uh, complete each lesson uh, and track your progress if you make an account there. Uh, it's a very helpful website and they actually have a few analytical tools you can use as well. Um, and it's a, a website I've really loved using uh, ever since I got started in this market. So I'll leave, I'll leave the link down in the description for you guys to go out and check uh, kind of check the work and see what I missed out on if I did miss out on any, anything. And if I did miss out on something that you guys want to see included in this video, go ahead and leave it in the description because I'm sure I will remake this series, you know, next year or a couple years from now, something like that. So go ahead, guys, go down in the link in the description, uh, check out the babypips.com website, and also check out our free Discord group where we provide you guys free signals every single day. Uh, Sunday through Thursday normally if there is a trade that I do take um, and again there's going to be a growing community of people interested in the same market so it's a great mastermind community for those of you guys who are looking to make this a real long-term commitment so hope you guys enjoyed this video again discussing the foundations of Forex and I will see you guys over in the next lesson